very first makeup tutorial for my YouTube ever. My coffee. I cannot start without my coffee. So, props to that. So the first thing that I like to use is a witch hazel. The Dickinson's is my absolute favorite. So I like to use a cotton ball or a cotton round. Just clean it up with the witch hazel. I find that this really allows any like excess oils or dirt that um, for some reason I missed whenever I was washing my face that didn't come off. This um, really gets it and it also leaves your skin super, super soft. All right, so after you have cleaned your face with your witch hazel, with a, a cotton round. Cotton round. And one thing you're gonna learn about things that I'm teaching you, everything, everything. Uh, is drugstore or Target or Walmart or Ulta. And when I say Ulta, I mean you walk in, you go to the left where it's affordable for mostly all people, not go in and go to the right and you're like, hey, y'all are trying scare not like that mostly everything that i use is super affordable uh my favorite all-time moisturizer and i have never switched up on this is my nivea soft it's face body and hands excuse me while my dog is chugging where you go i'm trying to film a video could you get out please uh nivea soft face body and hands super lightweight but yet very very like nourishing is that a good word for it about that much um, all right so you want to apply this throughout your entire face and most definitely down to your neck also i like to like work it up i may be bugging but i feel like this like makes me look More times than not, 90% of the time, I'm using that as like my primer and moisturizer because I'm not like fully in love with the primer right now for myself and my skin. So yeah, that moisturizer is bomb and affordable. All right, so the next thing, I am with the Maybelline Super Stay Full Coverage 24 Hour Foundation. And I also use this on mostly all my clients and they are obsessed. They always end up like, I can't believe that's Maybelline. I can't believe like that is that great. Like I spend 50 to $80 on foundations and I'm not obsessed with them like this one. Nobody can afford that shit. So this is a elf powder brush, but I'm going to use it. It's like a little kabuki brush. I used it yesterday. So that's what you see on it. I literally use a pump, a pump, a pump. That's it, that's one little pump there. And I like to do like one side of my face and then pump again and do the other. I usually don't even use a whole pump on my forehead. I don't like to do like a ton on my forehead only because you know, I'm like 31 now and there's like some little wrinkles and stuff that don't need to be seen like that. So we try and avoid that. I'm going to start kind of just very lightly patting this in. And then after you've kind of pat it in places that you want to cover, and also love, love, love to use foundation over the um, eyelid as like an eyeshadow primer. So that's really nice. So you want to just buff. Once you kind of get things in the place that you want, you can start doing like little round circular motions and always take this just a little bit down to your neck. I'm not the person who uses like a whole different foundation color than your skin and have to do it like down into your boobs and your stomach, like, whoa. Like again, another pump for the other side. So that is the foundation. The concealer I'm using today was a gift. I don't always use this, don't always give myself these things. This is a gift from a friend. It's the Tarte Shape Tape. I absolutely love it, but I also have found there's a Maybelline and there's a CoverGirl that are very, very similar to this. And in my next videos to come, I will use those instead of this. I find that it's almost the same exact coverage. 
and for like literally probably a third of the price. I like to first go in to the little corner, make sure I'm eliminating any darkness that I have and just pulling that out. And I like to kind of give that illusion that we're going upward and outward so it looks like like I'm a weight bitch, I'm here. One thing I really, really want everyone to realize is like something that is done wrong is people stop their highlight for concealer like here and then you see it in pictures and you're like but i took this down to where my um cheekbone ends so it's giving that illusion that i have a super 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 high um cheekbone all right i'm gonna take a little bit along the center of my nose top of my lip in here sometimes i like to just go like this if you have redness around your nose i'm gonna go in with a beauty blender this one is elf it comes in a pack of two they're amazing you can wash them and reuse them and then i'm gonna also use my nyx uh matte finish set spray and i'm gonna just spritz my face it kind of gives it a little bit of a hydration before i blend this out but it's also helping it like really set in Whenever you're blending out your concealer, first of all, try and get as close to the eye as possible. So you wanna be blotting, patting, beating that face up and down. You're never wiping. You never want that wiping motion because if you start to do that wiping motion, you are ultimately moving your foundation and your concealer. So nothing's really setting in. I also like to take this into my eye a little bit, again, as like a primer for my shadow. That's that. All right, so next I'm gonna set it. If you know me, if you ask me like, oh, what's your favorite setting powder? You don't even have to ask. If you know me, you don't even have to ask. My favorite setting powder of all time is Airspun. Translucent extra coverage, bomb. I've used it for literally, I'd say eight years. And I never vary, I never stray. I use it on myself, I use it on clients. I like to dump it into the little cup, which is the lid, using my same beauty blender that I blend it out with. And I'm going to tap into my powder and I'm going to go back in all the places that I highlighted with my concealer and start setting that in. I always set where I did my concealer first and then I go back and kind of buff out the excess around the entire face. I'm gonna go back in. This is a cute little brush. It has little like beads in it. Um, this was a wet and wild set that I found over the holidays. Um, this is a just a loose powder brush and I like to go in and just kind of buff out the rest. I'm not really adding a lot more powder or product, but just to make sure that everything is set. This is what you will look like at this point, a little ghostly, but it's good. And you can see that tone of foundation and powder blend perfectly all the way down into my neck. Like I don't have to take my clothes off and keep like, you know, going. Just pick a color that matches you guys. It's okay if you're light, it's okay if you're dark, whatever you are. Oh no shit. All right. Next, I'm gonna go in for my contour. This is another cute little brush that came in that set. With little beads this is that super fine point definition contour brush called rk by kiss so kiss that has like nail product and um makeup i get this from like a local hair store i need to get a new one obviously it's almost running out because i use it so often this is the 3t contour um kit and it comes in a powder and it comes in a cream this one is the powder and this is the medium to dark. So when you're doing contour, it needs to be matte. Like, I don't, I don't know, it needs to be matte. So, I'm gonna go in here with this shade that I'm running out of, with my little fine definition contour brush, and just kind of mix it in there. This is the part where you're gonna be like, are you sure, girl? But I'm positive. 
So I like to use this and I'm really gonna define everything that I'm gonna contour. When I do my contour, again, people do it too high, people do it too low. It's finding it exactly right. So find your, your cheekbone where it ends. That is literally where you're gonna put it, top of my ear. And I start to come down and under the little apple, what we consider the apple of the cheek. And I don't keep it super straight. I start to kind of curve it under to give it that illusion. And I think. What? Just wait, honey, just wait. All right, same on the other side. One thing that's really important about when you're doing your contour is like, don't be afraid to apply product. People are so afraid. Like, okay, if it's too heavy, you can buff that shit out with some, some like translucent powder or whatever you need to do. But if you truly want a highlight contour, go for it. I like to go along the very top of my forehead and along to almost where it like attaches here, just to again, oh, I got powder in my hair. Um, really define. I like a very defined, especially if my hair is like slicked back like this. I like to really define um, my forehead. Crazy, looking crazy, looking unblended, exactly. And I'm also gonna take that same color. I used to use so many different brushes to contour my nose because if you ask my husband and you know him, he's like, your nose is so crooked, but I love you. I don't even know why it goes anymore. I just know it's crooked. I used to use so many different brushes and I find that right now I'm obsessed with this one for it, just using the corner of it again. So I'm gonna take this and you can make your nose as thin as you want. So like play with it until you know exactly how you want. Just play. And then I also like to buff it up into my brows. It has that natural connect. Now that you kind of have your definition of everything, I'm gonna go in with my e.l.f. It's a little diagonal, also a contour brush. I think it was like three to five dollars. And I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna go back in with those same colors, kind of mixing some of the lighter ones and never going below the line that I've kind of created for myself as a guide, but I'm gonna start right on it and I'm just gonna start to do circular motions, blending it up and outward. You kind of see the difference already, like this side compared to this side. Crazy, not crazy. Um, my loose powder again in my, my beauty blender. And I just like to pat underneath the eye, just to start a little bit of a baking process. I don't like to do too much, but I do definitely love a bake. I use three things for my brows. Again, I have a favorite, and once I found it, I haven't stemmed away from it. Um, sometimes it's hard to find, which I don't know why. NYX, I would love to know why, but. This is the NYX Professional Makeup Eyebrow Pencil in Dark Brown. So it has like a little spoolie on one end and then this end and it's retractable. I don't like brow pencils that have to sharpen. I find that super annoying. Always spoolie through, brush my brow, see what I'm working with, what I need to fill, what I don't need to fill. All right, so I do a thing for myself that I call, I drop the brow. Um, a lot of people find that they need to add an arch because they don't have much of an arch. I'm not super huge on like having a major arch. I'm huge on just creating like a complete face that is like perfect palette for applying your shadows, your liner, your lashes. And here, I wish there was more hair. So what I do is like, I start here at the base of the brow and I literally take this out like such, I'm kind of giving you a guide.
I like to really define the shape first and then fill it in. So you want your brow to start here, straight up from your tear duct. And then you want it to end right there as it angles out from the corner of the eye. So after I've done that, then I like to go in with little upward strokes, keeping it keeping it very hair-like. We don't wanna act like we're using a Sharpie marker because I'll show you guys eventually. My brows in the past, when I was young and I thought I was doing it, they look like I used a Sharpie. So in this area, I like to go up and then in this area, I start to go out. Then I like to go in, this is actually a Rimmel um, brow this way. It's a brow styling gel, it's just clear. I love it, love it, love it. Again, super affordable, I think this was like $6. It has a little spoolie. I don't like to use too much product, but start to brush upward and then outward. Really to place that brow exactly where you want. Just makes the eye more defined. This is Jordana or G Jordana. I'm not sure how you say it. This is actually just a retractable brow pencil that they have at Walgreens. They carry this line. I really like it. And this is in the color Lavish Brown. It's very creamy. I like to go in and just define the bottom of the brow the slightest bit more. And sometimes I go back in with the brow gel after that, and sometimes I don't, just depending on how it looks. Too. All right, I'm gonna do the other brow, and I'll be right back. Um, how to cut it if you want to with your concealer. I'm gonna go back in. This is my Tarte Shape Tape again. If you're using the Maybelline or the CoverGirl, they both work the same. So I I use this tip point of it, and I just clean and define the slightest bit more. And I usually don't go all the way out because I can just drag product. I don't want to put too much. I'm going to use, this is a MAC brush. Couldn't tell you the number. I've had it for forever. It's a super tight bristle. And I just like to define and buff that out just the slightest. Again, super light-handed. Light-handed, is that a word? See how that really cuts it that much more. Same on the other. We're gonna go in with our airspun powder, just lightly tap into that, get rid of any excess, and just set that because we don't need the concealer moving all over the place. All right, so the shadow look that I did yesterday all came from one palette and it's the Morphe Jean Charles. This is Punch Me. Punch Me is going to be my crease slash transition color. Then I'm also going to use T, which is a very matte chocolate brown. And then finally, for like a highlight, I'm going to use ring lights. Hey, ring lights. Um, I'm going to go in with, this again is one of the Wet n Wild brushes that I got in a set for the holiday. This is just a nice, blending brush super fluffy whenever you're doing your transition slash crease color you want it to be very very like light and fluffy so you can blend like crazy so i'm just gonna go into punch me ding, 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 ding. tap off any excess and just start to really go into the crease you don't have to worry about it being too perfect right now when i do a color like this in my crease 
I consider this like the contour of my eye. So how I've contoured my whole face, my nose, da da da. This is the contour of my eye. Um, sometimes I'll just leave it like that, throw on mascara, and go with a red lip. There's so many things you can just do with a nice crease color um, by itself. All right, just because we're about to go in with the deeper shade to really smoke it out, I'm going to put a little bit more of my loose powder underneath so it's gonna be easy to swipe away if there's any fallout, which there shouldn't be too much, but you gotta be safe. So now we're gonna use T. It's a dark, smoky chocolate color here. Again, this is a brush that I got in that Wet n Wild set. I used it yesterday for the look, as you can see. It's more of a compact brush. It's not so much like a blending brush because I'm really packing the color on now. I'm gonna rub it into there. Tap off too much if you have. Now the key to getting like a good smoky eye is not blending it like we just did that lighter color. I'm really gonna pack this on and I'm gonna pack it really onto the lid, keeping it close to the lash line. And then I can always go back with my brush that I already used and blend it out. make it so after i've kind of placed that in you can see a little bit of like detailing that's not exactly blended out i'm going to go back with that same brush and i'm going to go back in with punch me and i'm just going to slightly blend that out together marry the two together Let me do the other side. I don't even know what this brush is. It's a very, very tight, it's not an angled brush, it's a flat brush. I like to use this brush underneath my eye to really smoke out any color that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna pat it into T, and I'm gonna just start from the corner and really smoke out this lash line on the bottom. And I like to connect it here in the corner. So you see the difference in like using that shadow to smoke it out versus if I put a liner, like a liner is going to be so harsh, but that keeps it soft. And you can go as heavy or as light as you want on this. Alrighty guys, so that final little detail that we're gonna throw in there, I'm gonna use the same brush that I used to buff out when I cleaned my concealer underneath my brow to cut it. I'm going to use my um, NYX, my matte finishing spray again, and I'm gonna just kind of spritz over this brush to make it a little bit moist, not wet, just a little moist. It really enhances the color when you do that. I'm gonna throw it here into ring light. And I'm gonna pop that into the inner corner. Sometimes I like to put it and then like touch it with my finger just to kind of not make it so placed. And then I'm gonna use the excess underneath this brow just a little bit. And I don't do from like inner corner out. I just kind of go from the arch area out and then sometimes blend it down. Bam honey, bam honey. The e.l.f. blush brush, I'm tapping that into my setting powder again. And I like to just tap it first and then slightly start to buff it out. To clean up anything that's underneath the, the um, eye from the shadow which if you use those techniques like I showed you where for the dark color which was tea to smoke it out we really press it in versus like blending it back and forth that should uh, save you a lot of time on your cleanup it's a day look so I'm just gonna do mascara all right, before we get into mascara, um, I am gonna pop on a little bit of blush. This again is the same brand where I get my contour, but this is the RK by Kiss again. Dare Blusher Sweet Cheeks Palette. I like it because it's very, very light, like this pink tone. I love it because it gives just enough without being like, whoa, it's very sheer. Um, again, I'm gonna use this Wet n Wild brush that I got in my holiday set. It's a blush brush. I love the little coverage it gives. I'm gonna just tap that into the 
this light pink here. It doesn't even say what color that is. This palette is just called Party and Dare. Party and Dare. So I'm gonna just pop that into like the apples on my cheeks. All right. And then the final thing that I'm gonna do on my cheeks before I go in for my mascara is I'm going to use, again, affordable, and it's so amazing. This is the e.l.f. Uh, Moonlight Pearls Highlight. Is a Wet n Wild brush that came in my set for the holidays. Like this because you could use it for shadow. You can use so many brushes for so many things. I hate that people limit them to certain makeup applications. I use them for everything. But this one I like to use specifically for my highlight. So I'm just gonna pop this in here. I like to add a little bit of highlight into my ear. Poor ears. Throw a little bit of highlight in that bitch. Then, using that brush I used for my highlight here, and I'm just gonna run it down the center of my nose. I never do mascara without curling my lashes first. Favorite, favorite, favorite mascara. This is the Maybelline, the Colossal Big Shot. And I get this, I usually get it in black as black. I wanna work it into the root of the lash, back and forth, and then work it up. So after I do my first good coat of mascara, I like to let it dry while I do my lips. And then I come back and I curl them again and put another coat. I don't have big lips really, but I love a full lip. So I enhance my own. I don't wanna get my lips done. I don't know if I'm gonna love it or if I'm gonna hate it. So I make it work as a makeup artist. I am going to use, this is a NYX lip pencil. These are the ones that I can sharpen myself. I love them so much. This is in the color Espresso. Even if I'm gonna do a very nude, like natural lip, I like to go darker with my liner so it really defines the lip shape. And then it allows, you know, for the, the nude tone lipstick or gloss to kind of balance out. But I do like a darker liner when I'm doing this. I start with my bottom lip. I definitely go outside of my lip but I still keep my lip shape. I feel like that's key. If you were to totally be like doing a whole new lip shape, people are gonna be like, I can tell. Which I'm sure people can tell, but it still looks natural, so. So after I've defined the lip, I like to lightly kind of fill it in, at least the corners. That works as a good little primer. All right, so I'm gonna go in with my, I'm really obsessed with this lipstick. These days I haven't been doing a whole lot of like lipsticks. I like the liquid to mattes or the liquid to mattes, but this is the matte Morphe lip stick in the color honey and I love it, it's super creamy. It gives good payoff and it also lasts. Uh, 
Um, after I do my other application of mascara, I'm gonna throw on gloss, so be right back. last detail that I'm gonna do I'm gonna go in this is a classic Mac gloss and this is oh baby final thing I'm gonna go into my NYX matte finish I like to shake it up first make sure it's good and then I'm gonna spritz myself down or like take a shower guys that's the final look for today the sultry kind of natural look for daytime hope you guys like it hope it was beneficial i hope you all can afford this cool product 